Today we're taking a look at the slow motion modes in both the Sony a7 IV and Sony FX30. Now in the Sony FX30, it offers 4K up to 120 frames per second, but in a cropped censored mode. Now I don't just mean it's a cropped censored camera, there's an additional crop to get into that 4K 120 mode. Where on the a7 IV, although it only offers 120p in the 1080 modes, it actually uses close to, if not the entire full frame of the sensor. So I wanna take a look in decent lighting and shoot some of this wakeboarding here and show you the differences in decent conditions on how each of these cameras are going to perform using the Tamron 35 to 150. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk to you about the conclusions I made about using the Tamron with two completely different sensor cameras and how it makes this an even more of an all-in-one lens that a lot of Sony shooters could definitely use in their kit. One of the things that I found out by using two completely different cameras and the same lens, the Tamron 35 to 150, it gave me completely different fields of view and really makes this lens more useful. In some situations, I could definitely use more than the 150 millimeters in full frame that you get on the Tamron 35 to 150 pairing with a full frame camera. And being able to just zoom in so much and still have really great quality video is a huge plus. And it makes it to where I could leave the Tamron 35 to 150 as my only lens in my kit and just have two different cameras kind of like film stocks with different features. Now let's talk about image quality when it comes to the 120p modes on both of the cameras. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, the a7 IV is 1080p, although it uses the full sensor, and the FX30 is 4K cropping in on the already Super 35 APS-C sensor. Now, when you look at the footage, it is very apparent that when shooting at the lower ISO, the 4K of the FX30 is just a lot crispier of an image, but, if you need the full frame image, you obviously can't get that from the FX30. And the fact that the a7 IV offers it, although it may not be as crispy, it really depends on where the footage is going to lie. If it's gonna be on YouTube, I think the image quality isn't gonna make that big of a difference. However, if you are trying to output a 4K video or maybe you're dealing with a lot of footage that's higher than 4K and it's being downsampled, downscaled to 4K for your output, then I think that's where seeing the 1080p footage from the a7 IV is going to be more apparent than using the 4K 120p from the FX30. And I did this test specifically because I wanted to see kind of where everything would lie. I had some thoughts that the 1080p and the a7 IV may have been sharper than it was, but looking at the footage, it's very apparent which is which. So when I shoot 120p, I'm probably gonna be sticking to the FX30, but because I have both of the cameras, I wanted to do the test just to get the definitive answer on when to use what. Now, if I'm out and about and I'm just shooting for fun and I only have the a7 IV with me, then I'm not gonna point my nose up at the 1080p, 120p mode. I know I say this a lot, but every camera is a tool and it's good to know when to and when not to use specific cameras. It's why I use different cameras in different scenarios. Part of the reason I picked up the a7 IV so I could use it in its full frame mode when I need that look, but then at the same time when I need more slow motion modes or for whatever it may be, I need longer form recording. I have the FX30 cameras for more corporate documentary work where I just need a more reliable video camera and not a hybrid camera. So if you have any questions on this setup, I'm gonna be having some more content coming out. I'll be planning on doing some comparisons on the 4K 60 modes. 
on the a7 IV against the FX30. And I'll also be doing a ProRes RAW video on the FX30 showing the differences shooting ProRes RAW versus shooting internally while you're actually hooked up to ProRes RAW, but then also shooting internally when you're not so you can see the field of view difference, see if there's a sharpness difference. Those tests have actually been filmed, but if you have any ideas, things you wanna see, make sure to comment below so I can see it before I edit that video together and I'll feature those questions in the upcoming video in the ProRes RAW series. So I do wanna thank you all for watching today's video. My name's Jeff Fagan. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.